Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. And this is the podcast where we speak with guests about practical tips that they have found useful in their lives, which can help us in our life to achieve our own inner peace and just finding a way of living life in a uh, happier fashion. And today I'm pleased to be joined uh, by Tommy Baker. And uh, thanks for being with us. Chris, very excited to be here and love what you're doing. So great work. Awesome. Uh, Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what brings you to talking about helping others find their inner peace. Absolutely. Well, I feel like the journey of uh, inner peace is, is one that uh, we're all on. And, um, you know, to me, it's it's something that uh, I've really had to work on taking the inner journey to make sure that I navigate uh, life and business and all of the things that um, I want to create the best uh, I can. And so for me, you know, I run my own business. I have a podcast uh, as well. And, you know, I specifically help entrepreneurs or those who, who want to be entrepreneurs, um, really launch, launch their businesses, get started, get in the game. Um, but it's so much less about the tactical, although that's important. It really comes back to exactly what you're talking about, Chris. There's always, with any type of change in life, anything we want to create, there's always going to be an emotional battle. And um, so a lot of what I spend my time on is very similar things to what you're doing um, and helping people with, you know, overcome the, the mindsets and the beliefs and the anxiety and the stressors of life so they can show up as their best self, whatever that means for them. Wonderful. And I, I know that's, you know, a, a big feat because many of us and, you know, myself included, just suffer from the day to day anxieties, the things that, uh, you know, just the little things that add up in, into some of the bigger things. Yes. Um, so what kind of guided you in, into creating uh, your podcast? And, and I would definitely encourage people to go and, and search for your podcast on iTunes. It's uh, a wonderful show. Um, but what, what kind of led you into, um, you know, doing what you do? Yeah, it started with with a deep curiosity, and that's where I always start people. You know, in terms of when they're looking to to create something that they haven't yet. You know, what are the things that they're already curious about, and just allowing themselves to go a little bit deeper into that. And for me, uh, the curiosity stemmed from you know uh, looking at how do how do we actually create behavior change that lasts. And obviously, this started as self preservation. I wanted to know, you know, why would I go to? Why would I read an amazing book and get excited and then? you know, wake up two weeks later and nothing has changed. Why would I start a fitness program and, and, and not seek it to fruition? Why would I get an idea about a business and wind up in the same place? And that led me down, you know, a rabbit hole of uh, human behavior, um, neuroscience, uh, personal development, uh, business principles, and, and really anything I could get my hands on um, to, to learn how I could navigate it for myself. And once I started to see the results and uh, how I felt on a daily basis because of that, then it just became a natural extension to, to help other people uh, achieve the same thing, to help them get clarity, to help them really get uh, build more powerful beliefs, to you know shed the anxiety and, and find ways to, to really navigate this experience. And so the podcast was such a great uh, tool for us to have conversations like this um, where we can really deep dive into that and give the audience some actionable stuff that they can use in their lives. 
What do you think is the main component that gets in the way of people making these changes? And, you know, I think this is a very timely discussion since many people made their New Year's resolutions. They've been working toward those resolutions. And when this show is airing, we're going to have people starting to drop out of their resolutions. Yes. Um, what, what do you think gets in the way of either starting this or continuing that process? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the numbers are, are pretty bleak, Chris. They're 92% of resolutions, um, you know, really don't, uh, are, you know, are, are basically abandoned. Um, so we're really dealing with, with not, not some great numbers. Now I have some, no. I have some, you know, uh, from a tactical component, there's, there's, the way people set goals that is, is, you know, uh, many times not doing them, uh, you know, any, any, any real service, but really what it comes down to at a core level is much deeper. Um, and it's the ability to, you know, believe that we can make it happen for ourselves. Um, and that's, that's really an identity piece. And it comes back to a, a whole host of places, including self-worth and, you know, our ability to deserve and feel like we're worthy of getting the results that we want. I started out in the fitness industry, again, self-preservation, and I ended up, uh, you know, uh, having a gym and, you know, I had hundreds of people and I was just, you know, I would see the same people with the same age, the same demographics, similar psychographics. I mean, as closely resembling each other as they could. Um, and, I was just amazed. Why would half the people see incredible results, transform their life, do experiences that they never could have imagined now that they had a new lease on life? And then the other people would stay stuck. And um, at the core, core piece, what I found was uh, an ability to um, feel worthy of the results and then also uh, create a belief that, they, that they're, they're not only capable, but they're worthy of creating those results for the long term. And that always gets in the, gets in the way. And I really think you've hit on something when you talk about the worthiness of that change. Yes. Can you talk a bit more about that in, in a sense of where do you think that comes from? Because I totally agree with you. And, and I've even seen people in my life coaching practice that don't even feel worthy of feeling happiness or inner peace. Um, well, where do you see the, the origins of this? Absolutely. And I, I believe and you know, I'm not uh, clinically <laughs> trained in this, but I believe that all of this comes from, you know, experiences in, in our childhood. And, and no matter how incredible or, you know, traumatic our childhood was, we all have these moments where we anchored these, these uh, narratives and these beliefs that we simply weren't worthy. Worthy of what? Worthy of some type of love, worthy of acceptance, worthy of speaking our truth, worthy of getting results in life and business. And so we created a what I call a, a container of what we allow ourselves to experience. And this container, if we go above the line of the container, if we step outside of the box, it feels really uncomfortable. And I, I've actually seen this in myself and, and other people and working with entrepreneurs. They, they may have um, um, you know, a financial container of what they feel worthy. And the moment that you increase that by 25, 50, 100%, they find a way to get rid of that money or invest it poorly or do something to get, or get away from it because they don't feel comfortable in that place. So that's where I believe it stems from. And, and to me, we have to release some of those obstacles and get to a place where we do feel worthy of inner peace. We feel worthy of waking up and instead of feeling anxious, we feel excited about the day. And, and I believe it's possible for everyone. Uh, it's a courageous journey. It's not always an easy one, um, but it's sure worth it. So as you can help people to understand that worthiness and, and they start, um, you know, working on what they need to work on to find the centerpiece, people tend to start looking at, you know, what's important in life? What is my meaning in life? How do you focus people in, in that way when, when you start looking at, you know, well, to what end am I helping myself to be a better person? Absolutely. And it, it really starts with asking some of those those deeper questions in terms of, you know, who am I? And that's just an identity piece. You know, what is the story that I tell myself about myself? Um, what is important to me? 
Um, you know, what is my life philosophy? What are some of the principles that I want to, I want to exemplify in the world? And there's this, there's this, what I consider like a personal toolkit that, you know, none, none of us were taught any of these things. Um, but if we don't know who we are at a core level, um, we're always going to find ways to sabotage. Uh, we're always going to find what's not working with us. We're always going to be in a reactive mode. Um, and so that's really step one is, is that personal responsibility, that ownership and that time with ourselves. And this is why to me, the practice of spending time in solitude, spending time for me, it's in, in nature, uh, journaling, reflecting, you know, cutting out some of the noise in life so we can access some of this deeper wisdom that we all have. And once we're clear about who we are, then the next steps become much more easier. So part of it is this, you know, the knowledge of who I am. So let me ask that basic question. How do I know that? <laughs> you got, uh, you got, you got 15 hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's why I kind of wanted to like, you know, you, you notice that inflection there of, do I dare yeah. say this? <laughs> a a absolutely. And I, and I love it because I'm all about deep conversations, but you know, so, so this is what I believe, Chris, is the journey that we're all on. I mean, this is, this is the hero's journey of our life. It's, it, it's, it's not that we're going to get to a place of discovering who we are in this moment and then never work on it again. It's a constant evolution and it's a constant practice. And if you want a practical application of this, I tell people, Hey, pull out a journal, right at the top of the notebook, I am, and then allow yourself to fill in the blanks of who you want to be or who you think you are or who, what, what comes to life. And, and often we need to do a little brain dump with that. And we, if we stick with it long enough, we start to find what resonates and we'll find a sentence in there or a phrase that that can become our foundation. And once we have that clarity around that, well, it's our responsibility to start living that because it's one thing to say, I am blank, I am X, Y, Z, but it's another to start living it. So that would be a very simple way to start, but it's going to be an evolution and it's going to be a practice. And, it, you know, Chris, you and I, you know, we're going to, we're going to change a lot throughout our lives and we've already changed many oh, yeah. times over based on our experiences and who we are. So that's the way I encourage, I invite people to treat it. Um, because so often I've wanted to come to a definite, definitive, definitive place. And I wasn't able to, because I was putting too much pressure on myself. So, um, that's where I would start people on, on that process. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a fun journey if you allow it to be. So if you don't mind the question, then what keeps you motivated and moving forward in your journey as you're finding uh, the, the center piece and helping others do the same. Absolutely. Well, you know, to, to me, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm very curious and I'm very curious about, you know, what are the, what are the, what are the blind spots that I'm, I'm constantly operating with? And that's why I go back to this evolution, this process, because, you know, to get to a place where we're experiencing inner peace 24 seven. I mean, is that possible? Maybe, but I, I, I believe that, you know, it's, it's the journey and the, you know, going through some of those challenging moments that when we do get the inner peace there, it's, it's, it's that much sweeter. And so we have to go through all the different experiences in life. And so for me, what keeps me motivated is, you know, uh, really being the, a student of life and, and a student of myself and, you know, if I have an argument with my fiance, it's like, you know, where was, where were my buttons pushed where I came out that way? You know, if I have something happen with a client, it's like, why did I show up that way? And just being the student and applying that the next time and looking to do better, not out of self-judgment, not out of the inner critic, but just wanting to show up and exemplify um, the better, the, the part of ourselves that we all have, uh, to me, often we're afraid to express it. So how do I begin to balance the challenge that I need to move myself forward with the notion of still being kind to myself so that I don't fall away because I beat myself up too much for not making it, but I do need to challenge myself a bit if I'm going to want to make it at all. 
Absolutely. And it's, it's such a, it's such a great question because it is this very special space where, you know, it's, it is important. If we want to create something that we don't currently experience or don't currently have, well, it, we're going to have to be challenged and get uncomfortable because naturally it's not part of our experience right now. But at the same time, and to what we talked about earlier, the reason why we don't last with goals and why it can be so difficult is because Chris, just like you said, we are so hard on ourselves and the stuff that we tell ourselves is stuff that we would never say to somebody else. And yet we take it at face value and we believe it and we allow ourselves to treat ourselves that way. So just like you said, it, it is a balance, right? But you know, um, the inner critic, if, we, if we're constantly feeding the inner critic, they're going to find the proof to, to, you know, to, to bring it to life. In other words, if, you know, if I, if I tell myself, you know, I can never, I, 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 you know, I'm just not born to be in shape or I can, I can never follow through on a program, then, you know, I'm going to look out into the world and I'm going to reaffirm why that's true. And so we have to get to a place where it's like, we hear the inner critic, right? And it's okay. And we detach from it, but we don't allow it to control our behaviors. And if we do this long, long term enough, we get to a place where we're able to challenge ourselves with respect, but not through guilt, through shame, through beating ourselves up. And that to me is, is the sweet spot where we're able to grow. So it's all about respecting self, which kind yes. of leads us almost full circle to where we were talking at the beginning is my worthiness if I'm going to be respecting myself. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's where, that's where it starts and that's where it ends. Um, yeah. Well, would probably the hardest piece of the puzzle. Um, but that would be, you know, what, what gets us going. Um, and one of the things that, you know, I, I like is in uh, one thing that was written about you talks about um, taking the action steps, living life by design, not by default. Yes. I really like that phrase that that really caught my attention. Can you talk a bit about that? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it becomes very easy to live a life um, by default. I mean, I found myself there. I was on a path of, you know, being in the financial services industry. Um, and the only reason that I was on that path was, you know, from pressure from my parents and, and just the, the collective pressure that I felt to do it. But it was 100% in the wrong realm of where I was headed. Um, and so often in life, uh, Chris, if we don't, if we don't take the time to, to consciously choose where we want to go, we're going to be swayed by forces greater than us. Um, and that could be anything from parents to coworkers to bosses to to other people. And and the problem with that, Chris, is that they don't have to live with the consequences of those decisions. And so while they may influence us. Ultimately, we are the people that have to deal with those consequences. And so for me, a life by design means taking a step back from the noise, taking a step back from the constant news media and all the negativity, taking a step back even from the people closest to us and taking a moment and saying, okay, what do I really want? What do I really value? What is really important to me and why? And once we have those answers, then we can make sure that the, the things that the opportunities, the people, the places that are coming into our life, we can be very radically honest and say, is this serving the answers to those questions? And if the answer is no, then they shouldn't take up space in your life. And if the answer is yes, they should. And that's really where you start to begin to create a life. Keyword is create um, instead of, of one that's that you wake up for, that you wake up one day and you say, how did I get here? I don't know how the time passed and I don't know how I'm here. This is not what I want. And then you have to. <clears throat> so ultimately, Chris, it, it becomes our responsibility um, to ensure that we don't wake up years down the line in a life that really isn't for us, um, chasing something that we don't want, surrounded by the people and places and environments that aren't ours, and that's where that's where that's where we create a life by design, and we don't step into something 
uh, that's a, just a default just because it was there and we didn't take the time to figure out what we truly wanted. So for the people who are listening now and saying to themselves, you know, this all makes sense. I would love to make this change in my life. What would be the starting point for them? What, what should they be working on right now that can help propel them to all of this that you're talking about? But, you know, they haven't even done anything yet except for saying, eh, it kind of sounds good. Absolutely. Well, well you're, you're still listening to the episode. So that that's already a big win. And I'm not even kidding about that. Like really own that. Um, and the fact that you're listening to the material like this puts you in the 5% of people who actually have the the, uh, the, the audacity to dream big and, and work on themselves. And so you're already winning uh, is what I want to say. So pat uh, ourselves but, on the back just for yes. the fact we're still listening. <laughs> please, please. And I'm always, I'm always pushing uh, – us for us to celebrate small wins because just like we talked about the inner critic we'll always find a reason to put ourselves down so like this is totally authentic like celebrate the fact that you're still here and then the, the second step would be you know we need to have clarity chris around this so i'm in downtown phoenix right now if i go out and i have a conversation which i actually do this all the time and i i have conversations with you know strangers and, and people and i ask them you know where you're headed what, you know, what are you excited about you know what's what are you working towards and there's no specificity, specificity in the answers. They don't really know. It's all very generic. Um, and, you know, they'll say things like, you know, I'm, I want to get a promotion or I want more money and I want to be in a relationship or I don't want this and I don't want that. And it's very vague. And if we're very vague and we, we're lacking clarity, we're never going to know what to do next because we'll, we'll get lost in that vagueness. And so the first step after after what we've done so far, Chris, would just be to – really get clarity around what we want and where we're going and why it's important to us. Um, because that's what I call the North star and the North star, you know, it's the first star that appears every evening. And this was always a, a guiding mechanism, you know, um, in ancient times when we were, you know, had to navigate using it. And that's the same thing in our lives. If we know if we have that North star in our mind, then we can start stepping into it every single day. And, and that makes so much sense and, you know, really encourage people to take that advice and to keep listening. Don't, don't stop now. Um, <laughs> so what, what do you think as we're kind of coming to a close on this, what, what else do you feel that people need to know right now, uh, you know, that, that can help them to start to make these solid and, and continual changes in their life? Absolutely. Well, the biggest thing is that, you know, right now, as you are, that you're enough in this moment. And secondly, that anything that's happened to you in the past, anytime that you fell short, anytime that you uh, put yourself out there and failed, anytime that you got hurt, anytime that you hurt others, um, that's not part of who you are. And so that would be the, the next thing, Chris, is for us to let go of that because it can be very hard to find the inner peace that we're looking for, create the next result, get the promotion at work, feel a spark again in our relationships if we're still walking around with all of those things of the past. And so you are enough and I encourage you to let go because we can let go. Right. It takes courage sometimes to let go. It can be scary to let go mm -hmm. of the past, even if it was hurtful. But once we do, that's when we start to get real freedom and real inner peace. And it can be that simple and it can also be that complicated. The great thing is ultimately we get to choose. And I think part of the key to that is that last part that you just said that we get to choose, you know, that it's important for us to, start making these decisions in our lives, start taking action, start, you know, really saying that we can do this and not sit back and wait for things, but to know that we have that ability to make the choices. Absolutely. And once we take that responsibility, uh, to me, it's very empowering because we don't have to wait for anybody else to make those choices because guess what? They, they won't. It's really up to us and um, start small. If, if this inspired you, if you, felt connected to this conversation. Don't try to change the world tomorrow. Just start with 20 minutes of, of time by yourself in the morning or maybe pick up a journaling practice or maybe re-listen to this and now take notes with it. I mean, really start small and then celebrate that win 
and then that's going to create momentum. Exactly. So if people want to know more about you and know more about how you can help guide them through all of this, what's the best uh, way for them to do so? Absolutely, Chris. And the, the, the main way right now is if, if this struck a chord in, in you um, during this conversation is I've got a new book coming out and it's available for pre-order. It's called The Leap of Your Life. And it's really um, a lot of the stuff that we talked about is about, you know, making a, a bold decision towards something that you want to create, even if you don't know how you're going to bring it to life. And there's a lot of tools in there um, to help people navigate that change and what that looks like and really how to honor ourselves to, to bring it to life. So you can find that on pre-order at any of the major booksellers, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's awesome. And uh, in the show notes, I also have the link, uh, you know, to your uh, websites and uh, social media. So people can uh, just kind of scroll through there and hit those links. And I really, as I mentioned before, I encourage people to check out your podcast. A lot of great information, um, you know, on life, and entrepreneurship, and, and all of that great stuff. So, uh, wonderful work that you're doing to really help a lot of people. It means the world, Chris, and uh, anybody out there listening. It's uh, I'm always humbled that you take the time and energy. There's a lot of podcasts out there, but you're in the right place and and in the in the right hands with Chris. Well, I, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, I'll send you the check later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for your time. I, I really appreciate uh, all of the wisdom that you've shared and uh, hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Absolutely. Right back to you. And thank you, Chris, and everybody who listens and had to, to take a, took a moment for themselves today because it means a lot. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode, and I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening and have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.